equation of a circle with any center. In the last video, we talked about the equation of the circle, where the center had to be the origin. Now, for this one, the center doesn't have to be the origin. It could be any part of your Cartesian plane. Now, as you can see in this one here, our center is what is denoted by the red dot over there. That's your center. Now, to get your equation of the circle, the first thing you need to do is determine where your radius is. Now, your radius is a line that connects the center to the circumference. This radius, let's call this radius R. Um, we have a point here on the circumference. Let's call that X and Y. And the center of the circle is normally represented as A and B, where A represents the X coordinate and B represents the Y coordinate at the center. So to calculate this, what we normally do is use a distance formula again, right? And the distance formula is R squared is equals to And this distance formula here would be the equation that we use. Whenever you're trying to find the equation of a circle, but the center is not at the origin, but any other coordinate, we normally use this formula over here. R squared is equals to X minus A squared plus Y minus B squared, where A and B represents the coordinates, the X and Y, right? The X and Y of the center. Yeah, wherever the center of your circle is, we always represent it as A and B. So let's try out an example. Now this question here says, determine the equation of a circle with a center C, which is negative 1 and 2, passing through the point B, which is 1 and negative 6. Since this here is our center, we understand that this would be A, and this here would be B. So the first part of my equation, I could actually write it down to say that it is going to be the equation of your circle looks like this. So as you can see, I'm replacing the value for A and replacing the value for B. So in turn, that will give you Now we notice that we've done half of the work. We have our A and B, our equation is almost done. So the only thing that is missing is our R. Now, if you go back to the question, it tells us that it passes through this, our equation of the circle passes through a point B, which is one and negative six. So we can substitute one and negative six into the equation. So when we do that, this is what we get. Our R square is 20, so we just substitute. And this here would be the equation that he wanted us to get. This question says, determine the coordinate of the center and the length of the radius if a circle has the equation x squared minus 2x plus y squared plus 10y plus 14 is equals to zero. Now we understand that this equation doesn't look the way we want it to look. We always want an equation of a circle when the center is not at the origin to always look like this. And this, as you see, unfortunately doesn't look like that. Now the only way you can change it from here to this is by doing completing the square. The concept of completing the square is making your x and your y into perfect squares. Now a perfect square is a number that whenever you square it gives you a whole number. So a perfect square is something like 16. Now we understand that 16 can be written as four squared. So therefore we can say that that's a perfect square. So we literally want x squared minus two x to look like this, which is a perfect square. The same thing also applies to y squared plus 10 y. We want it to look like y minus b squared. So to complete the square, one, what we normally do is we add half b squared to both sides 
of the equals to sign. So we'll put half b squared on the left hand side and we do the exact same thing of half b squared on the right hand side. And the b I'm talking about here is not the b that we have here. The b comes from the format of a quadratic equation, which is ax squared plus bx plus c, right? So it's the coefficient of x. That's the b that I mean over here, okay? So let's do that right now. And looking at this here, you can see that we added 1 and 25 on the left hand side. And we did the exact same thing on the right hand side. So how it looks right now, for our x and our y, they are perfect squares. Now they are perfect squares because when you factorize them, they're literally going to give you perfect squares, which is exactly what we want. On the right hand side, we just simplify. So this here would be the equation of your circle. Whenever you have questions that look like this and you need to change it into this, you always use completing the square. I hope this helps.